Okay, the third video, we would like to review all these uh, neuropeptides, uh, we call them uh, small peptides. And uh, there are so many of them, uh, we usually call them isotocin. And in some cases, they are found in, as uh, urotensin. As you see, the name is tensin, it's related to blood pressure. And then uro means that it's from the tail uh, in many animals, from fish. But it's actually also found in uh, mammals or in humans. So if you look at the amino acid order from 1 to 9, they all have the C-terminal imitated. So that is the N-terminal. Uh, the first one must be a cysteine. The same thing is true for the sixth one is the cysteine as well, be be because they form disulfide loop here. The last one is a glycine, and then for uh, uh, arginine vasopressin, this is the arginine here, and then for oxytocin, there's an isoleucine there. But then there are also other uh, vasotocin there, but isoleucine there. Okay. So sometimes it's not easy to compare just a uh, sort peptide like this. But this table summarizes all these uh, different names. So the hormones or ancestral hormone, we have the oxytocin and AVP, arginine vasopressin. They are mainly found in mammals. It's found with uh, uh, vasopressin or arginine vasopressin in mammals except pigs and also other uh, rare or special mammals known as Macro or Pontia. And then this uh, lysipressin, venipressin, arginine vasotocin, they are found in different placental mammals or also those uh, mammals with a pouch, we call it uh, marsupials, and then also marsupials, and then also in birds and uh, reptiles and amphibians and fish. So these are quite common. Also in all the fish, why we study fish? Because all of these uh, toxins, they are related to water retention and water control, right? So you would assume that teleos or bony fish, which are aquatic species, and these species, they need to control water in their body, be that living in fresh water, or be that living in uh, salt water. Okay, they need to control the water, and then mesotocins, and then uh, in these uh, special fish, uh, the elastoplex like rays or sharks, they have different uh, mitosin or asbestosin and so on, and they have changed uh, only a few amino acids. So uh, if you understand that, perhaps you would appreciate during the course of evolution from fish and then to mammals. Okay, let's take a look of the phylogenetic tree. Oh, before that, we look into those different toxin. And then uh, there are vasotoxin or vasopressin. There are oxytocin or oxytocin-like hormone. And then this, for these two groups, uh, you would imagine that uh, vasopressins were recently found in the uh, mammals and then there are also vasotoxin in long mammals and then for the fish or sharks or bony fish or lung fish or red fish they all have this oxytocin like hormone okay? so perhaps during the course of the evolution mammals maintain to use oxytocin to control water retention or muscle contraction and so on. Okay. So this is a phylogenetic tree. We can see that uh, from the cytostomes, those are fish with a round mouth, we started to have this way so toxic. And then one line moved into elasmoplank, shark and scales and race. And then uh, for the chimera, those are the special kind of vertebrae that would include uh, mammals will have this branch leading to the formation or maintaining this oxytocin. For the mesotocins, they are found in amphibians and also in other primitive fish species including lungfish. 
And then the isotocin will start from here and then into telios. Okay, so the primitive vertebrates, including this primitive jawless fish, including like uh, lamprey and hagfish, would have these uh, vasotocins. So we are keeping this uh, oxytocin, this one line, and then another line is isotocin. But uh, uh, these are uh, perhaps more speculative. But what we are trying to understand is that all this tosin that exists in different organisms in the vertebrates. So this is another phylogenetic relationship. We can see the vasopressin, uh, lysopressins, and also phenopressins, and also on this line here, vasotocin. All right, they are found in uh, mammals, and oxytocin is also maintained in these uh, mammals, and then mesotocin found in these more primitive animals or vertebrates, and the isotocin more related to fish, and these are all having what we call water retention function. And of course, the other pepsin and conopepsin for the snails, in the tocin in insects, and they also are found in invertebrates, okay? and all about the control of water and also muscle contraction because after all we are animals and all these uh, behaviors or actions are very important to our uh, uh, <coughs> actions and reaction to the environment or to external stimuli. So if you have this uh, basic background of all these the different kinds of uh, uh, oxytocin, or bisotocin, or isotocin, or isotocin, and so on. And we perhaps also demonstrate that uh, the evolution of these uh, peptides would bring about the more complicated behavior, including sexual behavior, um, maternity or paternity, and so on. And these are all animal behaviors. Now, uh, we also need to look into these, uh, what we call urophysis. Urophysis is the gland in the tail, we call it the caudal neural secretion. So our tail would have some uh, sensational events. We have these uh, urotensins, UT1 and 2. They are found in fish and some are tetrapod. Tetrapod means uh, animal with four legs. And then they have uh, so active effects in all vertebrates study, including human. And again, they have this structure similar, but not the same. This is the uh, N-terminal and C-terminal. The urotensins are not imitated. You can see the C-terminal. Uh, yes, they have the disulfide loop, but the disulfide loop are not from the first and the sixth amino axis of cysteine. So uh, urotensin 1 has a racial depressor, Two as well. This is found in what we call homeotherms, the animals that would control temperature. And then UT2 is common in uh, poketotherms, those animals that could not control their body temperature. In other words, their body temperature is the same as the ambient temperature. And then we also have other uh, urotensin 4. Actually, it's very similar to arginine vasotocin. So what is of interest to know is that mammalian urotensin 2 has similar structure to uh, one of the hormones known as somatostatin, which is the hormone related to growth. Okay? Uh, but UT1 is similar to corticotropic releasing hormone in sheep. So I suppose uh, what we are trying to bring about is the different toxins that are in different parts of the body uh, we need uh, to study them more, but unfortunately, recent uh, uh, control or study of these uh, hormones are mainly related to control of blood pressure because UT2 or urotensin 2 is a potent vessel constriction. So, scientists actually are looking for these uh, urotensin, see whether they change our blood pressure. Uh, what's the action of this urotensin? It's again also a uh, 7 transmembrane domain or G-protein coupled receptor. 
but its uh, power is actually a thousand, a hundred times more potent than endothelin. Endothelin is a peptide in the endothelial cells, and then after excitation, it would bring about contraction. But at the same time, <coughs> it would control calcium release in, in the cardiovascular system uh, together with the endothelial uh, action that would release uh, nitric oxide and end up with the cyclic GMP production to bring about relaxation. So the potentiation effect is that number one is a very strong for vessel constriction and then for sustained effect if it acts on the nitric oxide formation from NOS or nitric oxide synthase and also within the prostaglandin tube it will bring about well, with our vessel dilation so therefore we can think of UT2 receptor and targets because of this power for vessel constriction so if we can think of some antagonists to bind or to act on UT2 receptor to stop this effect because perhaps with this and then with this sustained effect we may bring about vessel dilation or tune down the blood pressure now if we look at the structures of all these uh, different peptides or somatostatin, this is human somatostatin, we'll talk about this when we go on to talk about human growth hormone. It has similar structure with these a few amino acids linked together. And then human urotensin 2 mouse gopi. Gopi is a fish and then gopi UT2 has been studied intensively in order to make this available in human because it's a similar structure that would bind to the receptor it would also be able to form as what we call antagonist or if it's with higher dose it would act on the same endothelial cells for muscle dilation and then there's another compound called UT2 receptor antagonist it would act on the uh, UT2 receptor but knocking down the effects of UT2. Therefore, to a certain extent, it would help to uh, knock down the effects of the UT2 receptor to reduce the vessel constriction effects. And then uh, with this, we have to discuss at the end of other blood pressure related hormones. We call them hormone because they act from the liver as angiotensinogen, which is a large peptide. By the action of renin, it would cliff up here between a histidine and a leucine at the end terminal to release angiotensin 1 or AT1 or ANG1 with this uh, peptide. So the whole system is known as Vending angiotensin system. A vending angiotensin system from the liver, actually it's mainly in the kidney, this angiotensinogen is from the liver. When it goes to the kidney, the renin would remove this, so we have angiotensin 1. And then uh, this is just only the beginning of the story because we have another enzyme known as ACE1 or angiotensin converting enzyme 1 to convert angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2 and which is an active hormone in the kidney together with angiotensin 3 under the action of aminopeptidase now right now the cleavage is from the amino N from this angiotensin 2 you can see uh, this amino acid is removed with uh, arginine, and then arginine also removed by aminopeptidase B that would form uh, valine, uh, VWIHPF, this is angiotensin 4, which is not functioning. So in other words, we have this aminopeptidase B to remove the action of angiotensin 3. There's another enzyme known as ACE, sorry, my typo mistake, it is to be ACE2. Angiotensin 2 
and then uh, this N2 turns into 2 or ACU2 and then uh, it's becoming more and more well known because the spike protein or S protein from uh, coronavirus including SARS virus and the recently identified 2019 uh, novel uh, coronavirus attacking us today uh, it would also act on this ACE2 and then uh, to cleave angiotensin 2 into this shorter arginine uh, sorry, the ANG127 okay so it would uh, remove the at the uh, C terminal, okay, and then if we, if we do not remove this angiotensin two, angiotensin two and three would act on angiotensin receptor or AT1 receptor to increase blood pressure, to induce uh, arginine vasopressin, to enhance water absorption and uh, more drinking and this is the role of angiotensin on mesopressin release this action is here we have the negative factors including aminopeptidase B and also angiotensin collecting enzyme 2 so to sum up uh, we have these things including no epinephrine, epinephrine arginine vasopressin, aldosterone, angiotensin 2 to increase blood pressure and bring about water retention. So therefore, scientists or pharmacists are trying to identify these different drugs to control blood pressure, including renin inhibitors to inhibit the enzyme, calcium channel blockers to stop calcium from getting into the system of the epithelial cells, angiotensin 2 receptor blockers, arginine converting enzyme inhibitors, and also beta blockers and blockers, and also beta mean uh, beta adrenergic nerve blocker, and all the thiazide diuretics, these drugs would inhibit those I've mentioned the system to control blood pressure or to reduce blood pressure. So at last we have this question on neurohypophysis hormone, which of the following is incorrect? A. The neurohypophysis loop contains neurons with vasopressin and oxytocin originally attached to neurophysin as precursors. B. The structural gene for vasopressin and oxytocin are linked closely and under the control of a single promoter. C. Vasopressin mediates relaxation of blood pressure and induces water retention in kidney. Oxytocin controls memory gland secretion and function and also uterine contraction as well. Angiotensin 2 induces vasopressin and raises blood pressure. Okay, I think obviously the answer should be B because the two genes are linked together but they are not controlled by a single promoter. Okay, so finally we move on to uh, POM C because uh, we also mentioned that vasopressin could induce the release of uh, 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 ACTH in the cortical tubes. Cortical tube is in the anterior pituitary gland. Uh, but the same peptide, POMC or opiomelanocortin, it will release a melanocyte stimulating hormone. So if you remember, we mentioned this, uh, which in the, a counter end of the action of, um, of uh, a pineal glands uh, secretion of melatonin. Okay, this, but this MSH is mainly in the intermediate loop of the pituitary gland to be cleaved off uh, from uh, POM C. So now focus on ACTH. ACTH actually adds on again the uh, G protein coupled receptor with seven transmembrane domain, which G protein and psychic AMP induce the actually involvement of the cholesterol ester, bring about the formation or synthesis of cholesterol. 
it also add on the inclusion of cholesterol into the mitochondria, where there's another protein also stimulated by ACTA transist action to promote this hormone is called steroidogenic MK regulatory protein or star protein to bring in cholesterol into this pathway from preganulon to 17 hydroxyprogesterol to 11 the oxycortisol and also to the formation of cortisol. Okay, the cortisol is actually in the secreting cells of the inner zone of the adrenal cortex. So this is the structure of the adrenal cortex and this is what we call the medulla or the inner zone. The adrenal cortex is on top of the kidney. So this is called the uh, adrenal gland. The adrenal gland with the similar uh, structure like the pomerulosa that will secrete aldosterone and then here Vesiculata will release the formation of the release of the uh, uh, cortisol, and then this is more for the male hormone or for the androgen in the reticularis here. So they have different cell origin, and then medulla would be uh, producing epinephrine and non epinephrine. So coming back to here, this is uh, the adrenal cortex here, would release uh, cortisol. So this is the cortex. This cortex outside. The outside will release this uh, cortisol and then we come back in the feedback mechanism or feedback loop to inhibit uh, CRH formation in the hypothalamus and also inhibit the formation of ACTH in the pituitary gland. And why we need this? We need to excite our body so I suppose uh, this uh, slide is showing the diurnal changes Diurnal changes mean the change within one day, the action of ACTH and cortisol. At noon or daytime, we are more active, so we have the ACTH level improve, and also the cortisol or glucocorticoid level in red. So these are for the actions or activity activities we have in the daytime until midnight, and then we go to sleep, and then everything turned down. Perhaps you have dream or rapid eye movement, then you have ACTH excited. But then in the morning, when you wake up, you have ACTH, and then you need to uh, boost the system of the whole body to wake up. And then also in the morning, you have breakfast, ACTH, and also the cortisol or glucocorticoid will come up after the stimulation of the ACTH. And then at noon, you would uh, slow down a little bit and then you also need more activities in the daytime. So this is what we have, what we have uh, in the diurnal changes of these the two hormones, ACTH and cortisol. And you can see that they are coupled together because ACTH will stimulate the release of cortisol. Okay, and then with higher level of cortisol, ACTH will drop again and so on. So in summary, uh, there are related peptides of toxin found in different animal species. Eurotensin has been focused and then uh, we discussed their relationship. There are profound effects on mixoconstriction and therefore drugs are being developed to serve as antagonists of the UT or Eurotensin receptor. We have also discussed the mutation in uh, oxytocin and vasopressin receptor and they have profound effects on uh, impact on human behavior. So that is the conclusion we have for the whole uh, three videos. And then at the end we have this exercise. Uh, we recent exercise. Uh, I understand that the names could be quite confusing. Okay. So I've taken all these exercises, uh, mainly this one from the textbook. You may compare di diabetes insipidus and also diabetes uh, mellitus, this is taught new pain, or diabetes mellitus, okay? And that would be uh, <coughs> sugar in the blood, and also diabetes insipidus. So what is this? A piece final and compare this to urophysin and neurophysin, okay? Neurophysin is actually a binding hormone for the, uh, the binding uh, peptide for the hormones of ADH, and also 
uh, oxytocin. So what's the difference between oxytocin and vasotocin, isotocin and mesotocin, polyurea and polydipsia. Polyurea mean uh, you need uh, to have uh, more, you not really need, but you are having more urine, so it's polyurea. Polydipsia mean you are very thirsty. Myometrial and also myoepithelial, these are different cell types and also urotensin and angiotensin. So these are two different systems. Okay, so you may try to compare and conscious each pair of these following terms. So these are exercises you may do and help you to understand more about these different terms and their actions. Finally, uh, you may take a look at these three papers, all related to how and why mutation of the vasopressin receptor or V1 or VT1. A receptor. The mutation actually is uh, also related to the uh, polymorphism of the long and not the short form of the mRNA and also relating to the loss of function of the oxytocin. And these uh, mutations or loss of function of oxytocin can have profound effects on human social behavior. The different behaviors including fears to autism and also to those uh, face recognition. Okay? That is to say that there are different polymorphisms relating to the hormone actions of this hormone relating to face recognition that would be social behavioral skills where whether you can uh, have strong impression of others' face. Autism is that you lose your social skills and then uh, fearless means that you do not fear of anything or in other words you may get into the condition of what we call anxiety okay I'm not going to tell you all the details but the recent research in the last uh, 20 years are uh, mainly related to the genes of these uh, receptors their expression levels in different brain region and also related to the polymorphism of the long or short form of the vasopressin receptor and so on and see how this would affect animal behavior and also human behavior. With that, I'll stop here and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.